Woo! Let's talk about music that I did enjoy. Let's talk about music that I did blood clot enjoy. The Weeknd featuring Playboy Carti, Timeless. Yo, first of all, the artwork. The artwork for the single. Where it features like the weekend and that mask. It's almost what's that um what's that movie? Is it Kingdom of Heaven? Remember that movie Kingdom of Heaven where the where the Emperor has like this mask and he suffers from like syphilis or something? He's got some sort of like disease that you know he's got boils over his face and shit, and he can't take it off, but he's a very wise and stoic and whatever king, but obviously he's got this you know, this ailment where he's not able to touch people and stuff because he's diseased and whatever it may be. That's what it kind of reminds me of. But Jesus Christ, man. We might have got one of the best verses from Carti we have gotten in many, many, many a year. And I wonder if it's on purpose. I wonder if Playboy Carti purposely does these verses, these features, where he's way more audible, he's way more understandable um, than he is on other records. Like, it's not an aggressive baby voice. He's very... You can kind of hear... You can pronounce words. He's not mumbling. He's very direct in what he's saying. It's very fucking catchy, right? Ever since I was a jit, I knew I'd be lit. Like, oh! <clears throat> you don't understand the amount of times I've replayed. You do not understand the amount of times I've replayed this record on the way to the gym. If ever there was a track that would get you pumped to pump, if ever there was a track that would get you pumped to, to get on it, to hit the town, to feel fucking bossy, to be on your fucking shit, to really be feeling yourself, it's this track. I swear to God. Ever since I was a jit, I knew I was a shit. Like, can you ever, can you ever, has there been a more perfect line to open up a record featuring fucking Playboy Carti? Like, absolutely, absolutely flamethrower, honestly. The beginning of it is fucking dis disgusting. Actually, who, who produced this? I'm actually curious about who produced that. I never actually checked who produced it because people are saying it's Timberland, it's the Neptunes. Oh, it's the Neptunes. Really, it's an Neptune. So it's Pharrell Williams. This might be one of the, again, Pharrell's productions lately have been a little bit underwhelming. This might be one of the best productions I've heard from Pharrell in a long time also. Pharrell and somebody called OG Volta and, and, four other, and two other people, I'm, assu I'm assuming. Wow, it's actually a Pharrell production. I didn't actually know that. Um, but yeah, the, the, the video is fucking amazing. Um, big up to Playboy Carti also for his update in style. I found that's fucking crazy. One minute he's head to toe in Rick and shit. And now all of a sudden he's doing this like, Dipset, you know, uh, I don't know, dipset sort of style of dressing early 2000s with the baggy jerseys, fabulous style with the retro jerseys, wearing them backwards, pro club t shirts, big jeans, big leather jackets, Pele, and again, specifically Pele Pele. He's not doing Averex because I would, if it was me, I'll do Averex if I was trying to go for that style because it reminds me of the time when I used to go to church and a lot of the older guys who were kind of like, you know, the trappers and shit and the fucking scammer guys would be wearing Averexes back. That, that, that church I went to was fucking crazy. The the guys that will come into church all the dealers and the trappers and shit and the scammers and they'll be coming to church in, on super bikes with avrexes on and shit and like crazy nice trainers and shit and just flexing in big body cars so that's what that reminds me of that sort of era but you know um, playboy cart is going for his own lane where he's kind of specifically going for the pele pele jackets which put to me represents more of a dipset cameron max b jim jones Joe santana type of aesthetic as opposed to the other stuff that's maybe a little bit more european or maybe just a little different of a style in general and uh, i'm also liking the double bandana under the hat i'm not i'm not mad at that at all the red and black bandana under the hat um the fucking flap thing attached to this new era is also pretty hard it reminds me a little bit of this um this additional um flap design on the side of the hat where you got the print on it as well it kind of reminds me of something that hood by air would have done in the past not too sure if it's a hood by air design but i think it's just a custom thing he does in-house but it would remind me of some sort of hood by air shit but i am fucking loving it because this is one of the this probably might be the only if you're not buying fakes this might be the most approachable playboy car this might be the most um affordable playboy car aesthetic of recent years maybe apart from the supreme era this era might be the most affordable because you could easily find an oversized varsity jacket, baseball jacket on eBay, vintage, whatever. You could easily find pro club t-shirts because I specifically buy pro club t-shirts. Um, I forgot that guy on fucking Fifth Dimension Forum. Big up that dude on Fifth Dimension Forum. Um, skinny, weird, autistic, white dude that lives in Japan. I think he might be Australian who used to always wear double taps and like really big pro club t-shirts. Whenever When I see pro club, I think of that guy. If you know what I'm talking about on forums, you know what I'm talking about. He's obsessed with fucking um, Tet and double taps. 
He wears like early era tech, all the army surplus shit. He loves to pin roll his trousers and wear, you know, um, retro runners and Air Maxes and shit. And he'd always wear Pro Club t-shirts. He swear by Pro Club. And because I think Pro Club t-shirts, although they're baggy, they're long. So I think that's why people like wearing them. They're not as like wide as like, if you get a t-shirt that's like Fire XL, usually there's just the shoulders are super, super long. But I think Pro Club t-shirts, yes, the shoulders are long, but they also elongate the body. So you get this really nice fit. So it, it almost feels a little bit like how a Rick Owens tee feels like, where it's almost like a dress. So that's what people wear. So I think this is the, this is, might be the most approachable of Playboy Carti style in recent years. Um, because the rest of the stuff, you know, you, have, you need some bucks, but anyone could, you could probably, you could probably buy this outfit Tim's included for like, I don't know, 200 pounds. It's not that difficult. You know, you, you could find this outfit done. And also like the black Tim's as well, not the brown ones that everyone's wearing. That's a nice look. But yeah, it's a fucking good video. And he, he's even got, he's even got Carti to do the video. But I think because he's a, maybe because he's a high level artist and shit. And maybe because Carti wants to be in the charts and shit. So he gives him a good verse, audible verse. He stars in the video. And yeah, it's a fucking sick, it's a sick video, sick tune. I loved everything about it. I've been playing it every single day since it's fucking dropped. I actually was a fan of it anyway since it fucking premiered. Um, Weekend did a really amazing live performance in Rio. Um, That was fucking incredible. I think if anything, I think that might have been like a fan service thing. I think that might have been self-funded just to kind of show his level of artistry and to maybe kind of act as a calling card, a business card, a CV for sponsors or investors later on in the future. Because that the scale of that show in Brazil was fucking crazy. And he premiered that, that song on that live show. And, and, you know, and when it comes to Carti, it's all about aura and his presence and shit. So I think premiering that song in Rio and then having Carti step out, wearing what he was wearing and shit, doing what he was doing, I think that's what added to the actual hype of the song. Um, and actually, I think during that same performance, there was a song he did with Anita that's really fucking hard as well. So I'm really looking forward to this album. This album might be really a bit of, This might be one of his best of recent years. Even though I'm a big fan of The Weeknd's discography, I think this album is shaping up to be one of his best, bro, because just based on these features. But yeah, this, this track is fucking phenomenal. I recommend you check it out. The Weeknd featuring Playboy Carti, Timeless. The video is available at the, at the moment. It's actually a video video with Playboy Carti in it. Also starring video girls in the video also, which is fucking wild like it's been a long time since he's recorded a proper video put out a proper single actually promoted it you know did everything you're meant to be doing as an artist instead of just like you know declining to put out features or authorized fucking verses so it's fucking sick the only thing about the weekend though is it me or am i the only person that feels like you kind of looking funny now ever since that video drake put out behind the scenes where he's sort of like purposely airing the weekend and really waiting until the last, 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 last minute to dap him up. So clearly, even back then, there were issues. And I think back then, most of the issues stem from him not signing with um, OVO. Because when they came through, they were came through together sort of thing. But he didn't really sign with OVO. He did his own thing and signed his own deal. And I think there was always a bit of beef between them. Canada beef, Toronto beef. I don't know whatever's going on in the scene. But I think you saw there that kind of you know the hierarchy drake was the big guy and the weekend is a little guy even though he was still super famous back then um i think that might be the time he, he did like king of the hill or something and um he was really sort of like cowering and looking kind of shy um as drake was going out of his way not to say anything or acknowledge him and then when he did he kind of like waited right until the end of the, at the moment it kind of made you look a bit Ugh. drake big timing you kind of you know made you look a bit wild but hey what can you do? And this probably explains as well why Drake maybe unfollowed Carti as well because this is the final nail. Do you know what I mean? The final approval that, you know, Playboy Carti has chosen his side and he decided to stay on the side of with the weekend. He, he wants to stay on the side of girls in lingerie and thongs covered in cocaine, you know? You know, you, I don't blame Carti. I don't blame Carti for staying on this delinquent side of things, you know what I mean? CD clubs, you know, cocktail bars, studios, you know, bus full of fucking whores and uh, <laughs> pocket fulls of pocket full of eight balls. I don't blame Carti in the slightest, but yeah, one of the best tracks in recent years. I fucking love everything about it. Big up fucking Playboy Carti, legit one of my favorite tracks. I recommend you check it out. Timeless featuring the weekend. Timeless, timeless featuring the blood clot. We can.